Hello my dear kiddos, how are you? This is Varsha and I welcome all of you to the PW Gulf channel, the one and only channel providing you the top quality lectures of class 9, 10th, 11th as well as 12th with respect to boards and competitive examinations point of view. I hope you are enjoying the sessions, the lectures that we are uh, already putting up with a lot of efforts. Today I am going to discuss a topic limit of function. This is the topic there in class 11th as well as 12th. Basically of class 11th but limit is very closely related to the chapter continuity and that's why it's very important we we'll revise it. So it's a revision of a revision chapter, double revision. Yes, you can say it's a double revision chapter limit of a function. Now this chapter has a very close uh, bond with me because the very first time when I was taught this chapter limits, I couldn't understand anything and literally I got three marks. I've said this before in uh, one of the sessions. I literally got three marks in this chapter out of 20. And that was a point I thought I would be quitting maths. Uh, but luckily, I did not quit and I am standing here right in front of you. That was the very first test of mine in class 11th of mathematics when I scored 3 marks. Uh, anyways, I want that this shouldn't happen with any of my students. And hence, over the years, I have focused more on this chapter on how I can actually make it more interesting and more practical well limits the word means seema seema kaun hai seema ko kyu dhoondna chahiye seema ko kaise dhoondna hai ye sari baatein hum karenge is chapter mein so this four things we are going to discuss the concept of lhl rhl and limits which is left hand limit right hand limit then methods to evaluate limit which is the part of importance to us Next, there are some standard limits, formulas, which we should know. And in the end, the boss of all, L'Hopital, a L'Hopital, L'Hopital rule. Some people call it as L Hospital's rule. Yes, we will be doing that also. It's not a part of CBSC. But if, if in CBSC you use L'Hopital rule, you won't get any marks. But limits is a very vast topic and from entrance point of view, from JWA examination point of view, definitely uh, one must know thoroughly the chapter limits in order to do continuity differentiability. So the next chapter that I'll be coming up for class 12th is continuity differentiability and MOD, methods of differentiation. And this is a preparation for that. It's a prep session. Let's begin with concept of LHL, RHL and limits. So the very first question in mind that comes is why at all there is a need of limits. We were dealing with functions, why suddenly limits came into picture, right? That's the question in mind, okay. So people tried finding value of function, value of any function, right? Everyone was curious to know the value of function at different points, value of function at 1, 2, 3, 4, what will be the value of function, right? That was the general habit of people we are people we like to find unwanted things we like we like to dig inside the earth and find what is there we like to go up far 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 away in the space and find out what is there so similarly people wanted to find what is the value of function now then they came across some functions whose value they couldn't find example functions like um x square minus 4 upon x minus 2. If I ask you the value of this function at x is equal to 2. If you put 2 square minus 4, 4 minus 4 upon 2 minus 2, you get 0 by 0. You get 0 by 0, isn't it? Now 0 by 0 is indeterminate. What is 0 by 0? We don't know. Is it 0? Is it infinity? Numerator says it is 0. 1 upon 0 means infinity. So what is it? We call it indeterminate. Because we cannot determine it, it's indeterminate illusionary. So people were not able to find value of some functions. Let's call these functions as difficult functions. They were very difficult, dreadful. Difficult functions 
they were not able to calculate so then that was the problem now this is the problem guys because people were not able to find value of functions at certain points they thought what could be the solution now just imagine there is a uh, there is a theft happening in your area right burglar it is called my english is weak please understand burglar <laughs> so the police comes and he wants to find the thief he obviously is not able to spot the thief in that place so what he does the first thing he is not able to find the thief he will go to the near and dear ones of the thief thief he will go to the family try to reach out the family of thief his close very very close friends and then he'll try to find about the thief so in order to find about the thief you have to go very close to the people who are known to thief right similarly if we don't know about a function at a point i don't know about the value of this function at x equal to 2 common sense says that i will find its value in the nearby region i will find its value in the very nearby regions like before 2 and after 2 i'll try to find the value and that should give me an idea for what is value of function at 2 with that common sense we proceeded with limit so they said okay let's not find the value of function at that point but we will find the limiting value of function solution was limiting value of function finding limiting value of function got it so now we are not interested in value of function at that point because we cannot find it it's a blind spot we will find its value in the nearby region and try to predict the value here so limits actually will not give you the value exactly at that point but it will give you what is the value when x is tending in that area so this is the problem this is the solution but how how do we find the value in nearby area that's your question now we got the problem we got the solution now the question is how to find that limiting value let's take the same example f of x is x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 we are not able to find that x equal to 2 we will say let's find the limiting value that is when limit x is tending to 2 x is moving towards 2 not exactly equal to 2 but almost near to 2 this is what we will try to find and how did i say how will we find it for example this is point 2 i'll try to find the value of function at uh, 1.999 at 1.99 very very close to 2 2.001 2.01 at these values suppose at f of 1.999 then f of 1.99 similarly at f of 1.9 maybe then towards the right on some left side values and then few right side values also we will try to check right numbers which are very close to 2 on the left and right we will try to find them and uh, i have not calculated actually but what you will do put x as 1.999 and get the answer let's say the answer is 3.999 here it's 3.99 here it's roughly 3.9 and when you put x as 2.01 001 you get the answer let's say 4.001 4.014 this is same right to point 1 let's say this is how you are getting the value trend you have to just see that trend now from the left if you see if you see the left from the left the value is increasing from 3.9 to 3.999 can you see 3.9 to 3.999 and from the right when you come from the right it's going from 4.1 to 4.001 that means what is the value at this mysterious point the point which we don't know you don't know at two you know from left it's coming very close to four from right also it's coming very close to four from left 3.999 from right 4.001 so this mysterious point would be four can you all guess it 
तो लिमिट डज दिस लिमिट डज दी प्रडिक्शन लिमिट गिव यू द अप्रॉक्सीमेट वैल्यू ऑफ द फंक्शन एट दैट पॉइंट बाई कैलकुलेटिंग द लेफ्ट एंड द राइट वैल्यूज ओके तो दैट्स हाउ वी ऑल विल प्रिडिक्ट दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस फंक्शन एट टू लिमिटिंग वैल्यू ऑफ दिस फंक्शन एट टू विल बी इक्वल टू गॉड इट सो वॉट इज लिमिट्स इफ एनीबडी आस यू वॉट इज लिमिट्स लिमिट इज यूज टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ फंक्शन एट ब्लाइंड स्पॉट दिस इज अ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट राइट वी डोंट नो द वैल्यू ऑफ फंक्शन एट टू सो इट्स अ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट फॉर अस used to find value of function at blind spots like when you are driving how many of you all drive while driving you would know there are many blind spots meaning you don't know when you reach that point if some other car vehicle is coming approaching you won't know so you already honk before reaching the blind spot or uh, in a mirror in a mirror you are able to see all the view but there is one particular area which you are not able to see so that becomes the blind spot so blind spot is a point at which you have no idea about about that point you have no idea so limit will help us find the value of those blind spot points okay so now the definition of limits this is just for general understanding for you and me the definition of limits is lhl which is left hand limit is written like this limit x tends to suppose you are calculating at a point c c minus f of x for left hand limit you will put a minus in the superscript and for right hand limit it is limit x tends to c plus f of x there is a point c left hand limit means on the left of c let's say the point on the left of c is c minus h and the point on right of c is c plus h but what is h h is a very 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 small number h is a very small number suppose c is 2 so h is 0.001 2 minus 0.001 and 2 plus 0.001 in the neighborhood of so this lhl can also be written as limit this h is very very small number that means almost ending to zero f of c minus h and right hand limit again h is a very small number and f of c plus h that means value of function at c minus h and c plus h the c minus h becomes lhl and c plus h becomes your rhl easy and for a given question and for a given question when your lhl is equal to rhl when the lhl is equal to rhl and they both are finite and they both are finite we will say that limit exist limit exist when lhl rhl is equal and they are finite numbers we say limit exist and the limiting value limit is written as limit x tends to c any point c is any point at which you are checking the limit is equal to f limit x tends to c f of x is equal to l and when lhl is not equal to rhl let's say the left side is giving me the answer closing to 4 like 3.9 3.99 3.999 right hand limit is giving me 10.1 10.2 something else left and right are not matching left and right are not matching we will say limit does not exist we will say limit does not exist limit does not exist understood guys this definition lhl is equal to rhl is what will be used in the next chapter continuity and differentiability continuity is nothing but the definition of limit the definition of limit this is the definition my dear students have you understood the concept of lhl and rhl shall we do a simple basic question on this f of x is modulus x upon gif of x limit x tends to 4 plus now this plus sign indicates right hand limit this plus sign tells you very 
easily clearly that you are approaching from the right hand side what is this limiting value 1 4 by 3 0 or none my lovely students my lovely students what say you if i put modulus x if i put the value mod of 4 plus upon gif of 4 plus what is mod of 4 plus it will be 4 because modulus modulus its only job is to take away the minus sign to give out the absolute value but gif gif for a gif function you should know the working of a gif function gif function always gives the left hand integer as a output if i put the input as 4 in the gif function output will be 4 if i put input as 3.9 output will be 3 if the input is 4.1 output will be 4 it always gives me the left integer as output on a number line if 3.9 you are taking left is 3 if you are taking 4 it will give 4 same integer but if you are taking 4.1 it will give the left integer as output gif greatest integer function I am talking about 4 plus. 4 plus means on the right of 4. So if you take any value on the right of 4, any value in the neighborhood of 4, slightly greater than 4, any value slightly greater than 4, if you put in the GIF, 4 plus means, just understand, it is slightly greater than 4. What will be the output? Will the output be equal to 4? Yes, ma'am. And the answer to this question is option A, 1. RHL is equal to 1. Next question. If limit exists, find the value of K. What are they saying? Limit exists. Limit exists means LHL is equal to RHL. So, this very clearly tells me LHL is equal to RHL and it's equal to finite value what is the definition of lhl limit calculating at point 0 0 is the point limit extends to 0 minus f of x is equal to limit extends to 0 plus f of x therefore limit extends to 0 minus what is the function on the left there are two functions this is x less than 0 the first one is x greater than 0. That means if there is a point 0, for x less than 0, function is 2x plus k. And for x greater than 0, function is sec x. So for LHL, function is 2x plus k. And for RHL, the function is sec x. We need to find the value of k. Just put x as 0, solving simple limits, direct substitution, guys. Putting x as 0, k is equal to sec 0, uh, yeah, 1. k is equal to 1, option b is the answer. This is direct substitution. We directly put the value of 0. But are there other ways? Is every question solved by direct substitution? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So, we have to get into understanding the different methods of evaluating limits. The different methods for evaluating limits. Now, as one of my teacher, my favorite teacher, my mentor, my guru says that during our graduation time, she used to teach physics. And I, I like physics. I am a physics student mainly. Sec mathematics is like my secondary subject. So, uh, theory of relativity, if you have heard about Einstein's theory of relativity, Einstein's theory of relativity is a very interesting thing which you will learn in your graduation. Uh, there is a very small nice red color book written by Einstein. And very interesting. So, she uh, was almost of age of 60 on the verge of retirement and she had taught this topic theory of relativity at least at least 29 times because she was in the service for 29 years 
he was teaching students for past 29 years and every year this topic theory of relativity she was teaching to every batch so at least i am saying 29 times because sometimes in a batch you have to teach the same topic two times or three times depends here you're on youtube each year we teach one topic for at least 10 times because we have so many batches on the pw gulf platform there are various batches and then we have to teach on youtube not once but many times this chapter will be taught, taught once for revision once for you know just practice questions once maybe pyqs previous year questions um one in the form of test different methods so here we teach one chapter at least 10 times each year so by now i would have taught limits chapter in my past seven years for at least 50 times and she she was very modest so she was very modest and she said that i have taught theory of relativity for at least 29 times but each time i enter a batch i am afraid of teaching this topic and i have to study myself i have to revise i have to study every time and she was a brilliant she was a genius but why every time she has to study that topic because each time you study it you get a new perspective in it you cannot understand theory of relativity in one go every time you study it you get a new perspective from that topic and that's why every time she has to teach in every new batch she was scared before entering because there was a new perspective she used to face and there are new method of teaching a new way of teaching it was not like for 29 years the same method is repeated and similarly i noticed that in my um, career of small career whatever small career i've had this topic limits when it has to be taught properly today i am just summarizing it like just going Havaka Jhoka. But when I have to actually teach it every year, every batch, it is different. I, I learn. Every time I learn, I get to know something new. Oh, it's like this. Oh, it can be taught like this. Oh, it can be taught like this. So different perspectives comes into picture. And we teacher, it's not that we don't have to prepare before coming to the session. Every teacher prepares before coming to the session. No matter how legend, legend a teacher you think might be. But they all prepare and and the only thing is they might be knowing everything each and everything that is going to be uh, taught to the students but the only thing is you don't know what new way you might come across so yes uh, if in case any of you are thinking of taking teaching as a profession it's not that bad let me tell you even i used to think long back that you know teaching the same thing every year to all these students how boring it will be are life will be so boring teaching same limits derivatives every day but when i got into it i understood i oh no it's challenging and it is the only work teaching is the only work in which for working you have to work extra before work like for all other work if you're working in a bank if you're working as a coder you go to the company and then you work for them but here we come and teach but before we come and teach we work so we work to work and then work again <laughs> anyways it's interesting and it's deep let's talk about the different methods of evaluating limits so there are four methods of evaluating limits in my perspective in your textbook perspective first one is your direct substitution wherein you don't have to think left and right just directly substitute the limiting value and get the answer just like your previous question two questions we directly put the value second method is factorization third method rationalization in some of the questions where roots are involved we will go with rationalization fourth method method uh, limits to infinity And then fifth method or sixth method can be written down, but fifth method is standard limits. That means using formulas. Sixth method is trigonometric limits, again using formulas. So we will study this four methods one by one. The second, third, and fourth method. The second, third, and fourth method are used whenever you have indeterminate forms. Whenever you have indeterminate forms that means you substitute the limit but the answer is indeterminate indeterminate these are the seven indeterminate forms 0 by 0 
इन्फिनिटी बाई इन्फिनिटी इन्फिनिटी माइनस इन्फिनिटी इन्फिनिटी इंटू जीरो वन रेस टू इन्फिनिटी जीरो रेस टू जीरो एंड इन्फिनिटी रेस टू जीरो दिस आर द सेवन इन डिटर्मिनेट फॉर्म्स वेन एवर यू सी लिमिट कमिंग इन एनी ऑफ दिस इन डिटर्मिनेट फॉर्म्स यू कैन नॉट डिरेक्टली सब्सटीट्यूड एंड गेट दी आंसर यू हैव टू अप्रोच इट डिफरेंटली बाई डिफरेंट वेज मे बी रैशनलाइजेशन फैक्ट्राइजेशन और वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू सी नेक्स्ट आफ्टर दैट Direct substitution is very easy. Whenever your function is linear, example, you have a question limit x tends to five, five x square plus nine upon three x. Right now, if I directly put x as five, it's not a problem. I'll get an answer. It's not indeterminate. What is five square? Twenty five five is a one twenty five plus nine upon three five is a fifteen, uh, which will be one thirty four upon fifteen. Got the answer. Direct substitution. No problem. But factorization, the second method. When do we use? So whenever you have an indeterminate form. The simplest one example which I can take is, we were struggling to find the value of this function, isn't it? If I directly put x as two, I'll get zero by zero, which is indeterminate. So try to simplify it. Try to factorize it. If you can factorize, that will be great. X minus two, x plus two upon x minus two. X minus two cancels, and we are left with limit x tends to two, x plus two. Two plus two, answer is four. Can you see the left hand, right hand limit was also giving me the answer as four, and this method is also giving me the answer as four. This is the algebraic way of solving. That was the long way graphical way of solving so guys in factorization one thing that you have to remember for sure one thing that will happen for sure is cancellation cancellation of limits that means the limit is 2 so the term containing 2 will definitely cancel once the cancellation happens your factorization is successful unless the cancellation happens your factorization is not complete you have to make sure that cancellation happens in every question of factorization example x square minus 3x plus 2 upon x square minus 1 if you directly try to put the value 1 you will get 0 by 0 indeterminate so do not do that instead limit x tends to 1 numerator try to factorize x minus 2 x minus one. Denominator a square minus b square is a minus b a plus b. Can you see the limiting term? The limit term extending to one. So the factor having one is being eliminated. And now the question is very easily solved. Now you will get the answer. Now you can directly substitute one minus two minus one upon two is the answer. The limiting value is one minus one by two. Question solved. Factorization always cancels. Next question: Limit x tends to minus two three x square plus a x plus a plus three upon x square plus x minus two exists. This limit exists. Then what is the value of a? Ten, fifteen, one, and two. You can pause and think about it. But one thing for sure: If I directly put the value x as minus two, what is the denominator? If I put x as minus two, minus two square, minus four, uh, sorry, plus four, plus four minus two, two, two minus two, zero. Denominator is zero. And factorization means numerator will also be zero. We somewhere no limit exists, but on direct substitution we are not getting the answer. That means it has to be an indeterminate form. It has to be an indeterminate form where denominator is zero. If denominator is zero. Which indeterminate form it can be? If denominator is zero, which indeterminate form it can be? First one. That means numerator is also zero. Can you conclude that numerator is also zero, my dear bacho? Three x square plus a x plus a plus three equal to zero. Think about it. Why numerator zero? Everybody will think again. Answer yourself. Why? Ma'am is taking numerator zero because limit exists. 
direct substitution is giving me the denominator 0. If denominator is 0, the only indeterminate form can be numerator 0. Numerator 0. Putting, solving, limit extends to minus 2. 2 square 4 3 is our 12 minus 2a plus a plus 3 equal to 0. 12 plus 3 15 and minus 2 plus a minus a. 15 minus a equal to 0. a is equal to 15 is the answer to this question. Sorry. a equal to 15 is answer. Next one. Next method rationalization. Again, when you get 0 by 0, infinity by infinity, 0 raised to infinity, any of the indeterminate forms and factorization is not possible, you will try rationalization. Rationalization, the only thing to know is it will have square roots. It will have square roots and you have to multiply and divide with the opposite side. Rationalize, you all know very well. I don't have to teach you at this stage. For example, in this question, you can see numerator has a square root, so you will rationalize the numerator. In some questions, you will have to rationalize denominator and in some questions, you will have to rationalize both numerator as well as denominator. If square root is both in numerator and denominator, you will try to rationalize both numerator and denominator. Here, I am rationalizing only the numerator because square root is only in the numerator. The numerator becomes the formula a minus b into a plus b. Can you all see? Yes, ma'am. Which is a square, first term square minus b square upon denominator x minus 3 into root of 3x plus 7 plus 4. Again, in rationalization, one thing which happens is your limit will get cancelled. Always cancellation of limits. That means the term which is causing 0 by 0, that will be cancelled. What do I mean by cancellation of limits? The term because of which I am getting 0 in the denominator. This is the term because of which I am getting 0 that has to be removed. And to remove that, we do factorization, rationalization, etc. Okay, 7 minus 16 will be 3x minus 9. 3 common x minus 3 upon x minus 3 root of 3x plus 7 plus 4. Now you can easily substitute the limits guys. Once cancellation is done, our task is you know just to put the value. Three upon x is 3, 3 3 is 9 plus 7 16, root 16 is 4. The answer will be 3 by 8. Just check, confirm. The answer will be 3 by 8. So, in rationalization, factorization, cancellation happens, the term leading to 0 has to be removed. Next, third method is limits to infinity. Sorry, fourth method. First method was direct, second factorize, third rationalize, fourth limits to infinity. Now in limits to infinity, what do we do? First thing is you will always see extending to infinity. The limit will be extending to infinity. How to solve such questions? To solve such questions, first step, take highest power. of numerator and denominator as common. You will always take the highest power from numerator and from denominator common. Second step. Now you will substitute the limit. But while you are substituting the limit, remember 1 upon x cube, 1 upon x square, 1 upon x, all of them are equal to 0. If x is equal to infinity, if x is tending to infinity, if you put x as infinity, 1 upon infinity 0, 1 upon infinity 0, 1 upon infinity 0. So, all these terms will be 0 if your question has limits tending to infinity. 
So these two steps will be solving the question. Third variation, if there are roots, if there are roots, then rationalize. And follow steps 1 and 2. So you will follow these two steps but after rationalization. If the infinity question has roots, first you will rationalize and then follow these two steps. Here is the question. Limit x tends to infinity that means it is an infinity question, limits to infinity x cube minus 2x square plus 1 upon 5x cube plus x plus 3. Numerator highest power is x cube. Denominator highest power is x cube. So, I am going to take x cube common from numerator as well as denominator. From numerator also you will take x cube common and from denominator also that will cancel the x cubes. 1 from second term if x cube is taken common, x square and x cube is taken, you will have to divide by x from third term if x cube is divide, uh, taken common you will have to divide by x cube. Similarly denominator 5 is left from first term. From second term 1 by x square will be left and from third term 3 by x cube. Can you understand this? Taking x cube common means x will be left from x square. x cube cancels putting the limit. Substitute your limit 2 by x, 2 by infinity 0, 1 by infinity cube 0. This 0, this 0. 1 by x square, 1 by x, 1 by x cube, all of them will be 0. Numerator is left with 1, denominator with 5. The answer to this question is 1 by 5. Done. Easy, very easy. Good. Next. Similarly, highest power from numerator. What is the highest power in numerator? x square, let's take x square common. So, 2 plus 1 by x minus 5 by x. From denominator, x cube is highest power, take it common. 4 plus 5 by x square plus 1 by x cube. x square and this 1 by x will be left. Substitute the limit. 1 upon x is 1 upon infinity. In the numerator, 2 plus 0 minus 0. Denominator again, 4 plus 0 plus 0. 1 upon infinity is anyway 0 and 0 into any number 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. It is going to give me the answer as 0. 1 upon x was your 1 by infinity 0. The answer to this limit is 0. Now the third variety which I was talking about is your square root. If you directly put x as infinity, you won't get any answer. You will get infinity minus infinity which is indeterminate. How to simplify? rationalize ma'am we will rationalize all right very good very good my kiddos you will rationalize what the numerator because there is only numerator that means you are going to multiply and divide with the opposite sign of numerator isn't it x square plus x plus root of x square plus 1 multiplied and divide with the opposite sign Numerator will become a minus b a plus b. Oh, where is my limits? Seema, to kaha hai seema? Seema. A minus b a plus b is a square. First term minus second term. Plus becomes minus upon x square plus x plus root of x square plus 1. x square cancels. Numerator is left with x minus 1. My dear lovelies, numerator is x minus 1. Denominator, now if you try to check out, what is the highest power in the denominator? Highest power of x in the denominator? x square. So, if you take x square outside the root, it will be x. If we take x square outside the root, it will be x. Oh yeah, balle balle. Numerator, we can't do anything. Uh, oh, yeah. What is the highest power in numerator? From numerator, and you have to follow the two steps. Two steps, highest power from numerator, denominator, taken common. And then substitute limits. Highest power of numerator is x. So, from numerator, take x common. Inside, first term will have 1. Second term will have 1 by x. 
denominator highest power is x square outside the root it is x inside if from first term x square is gone inside the root 1 from your x square you take common 1 by x plus x square is gone 1 from second term x, x square is go, gone 1 by x square are you able to understand this x is cancelled put infinity so 1 minus 0 upon 1 plus 0 in the root is root of 1 plus 0 this is 1 upon root 1 plus root 1 2 the answer to this question is 1 by 2 are you understanding are you enjoying this limits I Great. Bol badiya, bol badiya. Shabash, shabash. Mera boss. Let's go to the next topic. Al habibi, kuch bhi, kabhi bhi. Some standard limits. The first formula limit x tends to 0, x raised to n minus a raised to n upon x minus a is n times a raised to n minus 1, where a is a constant number. Some standard questions you must have seen like this. Limit x tends to 2. We have very well by hearted the powers of 2. x raised to 10 minus 2 raised to 10 upon x minus 2. Now directly x raised to n minus a raised to n upon x minus a formula if you put. It is n times a raised to n minus 1. 10 times 5, 1, 2. That will be equal to 5, 1, 2, 0. 2, 0, 4, 8, 5, 1, 2, 0. So, there is an app, there is a game, game application to call 2, 0, 4, 8. So, those who don't remember powers of 2, you can just go and play that game once or twice. Don't get addict, addicted. Wherein, yes, when you add two boxes, it becomes, it starts from 1. So, 2 raised to 0, 1. Add two boxes, 2 raised to 1. 2 then 4 boxes so 2 cube 8 2 raised to 4 16 2 raised to you will easily understand your scores the name of the game is 204 it you'll go till 204 it and if you're able to do clap let me know in the comments next question evaluate limit x tends to 1 x raised to 1 by 3 1 by 2 3 by 2 minus 3 upon x cube minus 1 try to put the limit directly not possible Try to factorize, not possible. Try to rationalize, not possible. So, everything that we do, all the four methods, not possible. Direct substitution, factorization, rationalization, infinity limits. So, then we go for this standard formula which we just saw. How do I apply? A little bit, our manipulations, so life ka hissa hai. Adjustments to karna hi padta hai. So, here we have adjustments karna hi padega. This 3, this minus 3. Kaddu katega, sab mein batega. So, minus 3 will be divided in all the 3 terms. 1 by 1, see how. Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. So, minus 3 is divided amongst all of them. Nicely, equally, peacefully. Yeah. Why am I doing that? Okay, denominator also. Let's write a cube minus b cube. a cube minus b cube is a minus b. a square plus a b plus b square. Correct. Numerator. x raised to 1 by 3 minus 1 upon x minus 1. x raised to 1 by 2 minus 1 upon x minus 1. x raised to 3 by 2 minus 1 upon x minus 1. So, this x minus 1 is again going with each term and here we are left with x square plus x plus 1. Just check out first term is a formula, second term is a formula, third term is a formula. The formula which we just saw. n of a raised to n minus 1. a is 1 so 1 raised to any power will be 1. This gives me 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2 plus 3 by 2. And then limit should be put here also 1 plus 1 plus 1 into 1 by 3. The final answer is uh, taking the LCM as 3, 
सिक्स वन बाय टू प्लस थ्री बाय टू इज बाय द वे डेढ़ और आधा दो टू प्लस वन बाय थ्री इंटू वन बाय थ्री 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 जा नाइन एंड या थ्री टू जा सिक्स प्लस वन सेवन सेवन बाय थ्री इंटू वन बाय थ्री दैट इज सेवन बाय नाइन हैपेंस टू बी द आंसर जस्ट चेक मूविंग ऑन गाइस ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक लिमिट्स यस 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 ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक लिमिट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेगमेंट एंड आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट एडजस्टमेंट्स ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक लिमिट्स ऑल वी हैव टू डू इज एडजस्ट if you want to find sigma you will have to do the adjustments what kind of adjustments numerator denominator adjustments i am not asking for life adjustments to say in a uh, 1 bhk room instead of 4 bhk villa no i am asking for simple adjustments numerator denominator adjustments like these three formula is note down for trigonometric limit extends to 0 sin x upon x1 tan x upon x1 1 minus cos x upon x1 basically when you put x as 0 you'll get 0 by 0 0 by 0 0 by 0 this is direct formula which how it's obtained l'hopital rule will see in the end well 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 its reciprocal is also true guys that means a uh, limit extends to 0 x upon sin x is also equal to 1 so yeah if it, if at all you come across this make sure you know now you should also be aware of the variations what are the variations the variation is instead of x now instead of x you have f of x you don't have x but you have x cube to x by 2 root x x square minus 9 instead of x you have anything else let's call it f of x then what happens to the formula limit f of x tends to 0 sin f of x upon f of that means if this is 0 the same term should be there in denominator the answer will be 1 can you see x x same same answer is 1 if you are also you get same same answer will be one if it's something else if its numerator is f of x denominator is g of x the answer will not be one do not write it like that right if it is same same and same same should also be equal to zero the same same value should also go to zero same same should go to zero same same going to zero same same going to zero then the answer is one limit If you have instead of sin x now, tan of f of x upon f of x, and this f of x is going to zero. Even then, the answer will be one. And third case, same. One minus cos f of x upon f of x, where the f of x is going to zero, will be one. People, please remember the reciprocals are also true. So you may write it if you want. But if you have understood, no need of writing it again what is this adjustment let's apply in a question sin 5x upon sin 7x whenever you see sin tan you should be very happy why you should be happy because with little adjustment they settle they are very simple functions in sin i am missing the denominator of sin i am missing the denominator of sin you are also missing yes because here we have denominator for sin so the denominator we are missing is x let's divide numerator and denominator with x now the adjustment you have to do carefully aise kuch bhi nahi karne ka dhyan se carefully if you are dividing numerator should divide denominator also like a tongue twister if you are dividing numerator divide denominator also good but then to apply a formula this is 5x this is not 5x this is 7x this is not 7x boss we need adjustment so we will multiply divide by 5 multiply divide by 7 that gives me a very nice adjustment 5 by 7 constant will always come out of the limit and we have 
न्यूमरेटर एडजस्टेड वेरी वेल डिनोमिनेटर एडजस्टेड वेरी वेल सेम 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 तो सेम सेम गिव्स मी वन द आंसर इज फाइव बाई सेवन ऑप्शन राइट माई किडोज दिस इज द एडजस्टमेंट दैट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट यू हैव टू डू इन एवरी क्वेश्चन टू द एडजस्टमेंट हियर वॉट विल हैपन माई डियर लवली किडोज माई बच्चा लोग वन माइनस कॉस फोर एक्स टू साइन स्क्वेर टू एक्स अपॉन एक्स नाउ वेन एवर देर इज स्क्वेर सिंपली यू सेपरेट दी टर्म्स टू लेट्स टेक टू कॉन्स्टेंट बींग आउट Write the limit. Sine square two x. You write it twice. Sine two x. Sine two x. One time x. The other time x. Two x. X square. What is missing? Missing. Missing in life. Two is missing, ma'am. Multiply divide by two. Missing. Missing, ma'am. Two is missing. Multiply divide by two. Two twos are four twos are eight constant outside. and we are left with the nice adjusted terms like sin 2x upon 2x and limit in multiplication will also be separated these two things these two limits they are turning out to be 1 and the answer is 8 the answer to this question is got it well 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 one more question adjustment let's get used to adjustment it's not always very easy well this is an easy adjustment my bacha log what's the numerator is also missing x denominator is also missing x let's multiply the numerator as well as denominator with x at the same time i am also separating the term in the numerator both numerator and denominator divided by x it's balanced adjustment the missing term 5 5 3 3 now just separate the limits and get the answer you have already got it hi okay. 5 times limit x tends to 0 sin 5x upon 5x minus 3 times limit x tends to 0 This, these are just the steps to be shown in case it's a subjective way of writing. If it's objective, I'll tell you in the end what to do. Magic, it's magic. Lopetal is the magic. Everything in the bracket is one five minus three. Answer will be two. Option C. Okay. Okay, okay. Very well. Next. Now this question has appeared in IIT 2012. I already have written it. X tan 2x minus 2x tan x upon 1 minus cos 2x the whole square. The formula I said will be repeatedly used. You have to use the same formula in the denominator. Well, numerator has something new. We are bored of the same formula. Tan 2x formula. What is tan 2x? 2 tan x. Upon one minus tan square x minus two x into tan x. The whole divided by one minus cos two x can be written as two sine square x the whole square. But show two x tan x two x tan x from the numerator can be taken out as common. That means in the bracket from first term it is one upon one minus tan square x, and from second term one divided by two square four is out, and this is sine raised to four x. Two ones are two twos are one by two is taken outside. The limit limit x tends to zero. Cross multiply here one minus. Cross multiplying one minus one minus of minus plus tan square x upon one minus tan square x in the bracket sine raised to four x and there is x tan x also outside. Okay, I forgot about the x tan x which is there outside. X tan x in the bracket one minus one plus tan square x denominator. I'm merging with this denominator. Sine raised to four x. Okay. Hmm.
वन वन कैंसल न्यूमरेटर इज टेन क्यूब एक्स इन टू एक्स एंड डिनोमिनेटर इज वन माइनस टेन स्क्वायर एक्स नाउ दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू कॉज एनी प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज वेन यू पुट एक्स एस जीरो टेन जीरो जीरो वन माइनस जीरो दिस इज गुड टर्म वी डोंट हैव प्रॉब्लम विथ वन माइनस टेन स्क्वायर एक्स वी हैव प्रॉब्लम विथ साइन रेस टू फोर एक्स बिकॉज इफ आई पुट एक्स एस जीरो इट मेक इट मेक जीरो द डिनोमिनेटर सो दैट इज अ प्रॉब्लम लाइफ इज कॉलिंग फॉर एडजस्टमेंट साइन इज मिसिंग सम वन साइन इज मिसिंग एक्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम टेन इज ऑल्सो मिसिंग एक्स बट साइन इज मिसिंग ओनली एक्स नो एक्स रेस टू फोर the demand has increased x raised to 4 because power is 4 denominator should also be 4 here also in order to ba balance numerator denominator multiply divide with x raised to 4 one of the x will go away that is tan cube x upon x cube sin raised to 4x upon x everything you can see nicely turning out into 1 limit x tends to 0 1 upon 1 minus tan square x into limit x tends to zero tan x upon x the whole cube upon limit x tends to zero sin x upon x the whole raised to four the brack this is one this is one this one minus zero one only thing left is one by two the question is solved please understand try to solve this question right now you have to pause the video and solve it on your own if you get stuck you can watch out the formulas used are multiple next very easy question sec x minus tan x limit x tends to 90 if you put directly sec 90 tan 90 it's infinity minus infinity indeterminate so kya kare bhai sahab either you can rationalize rationalize will give you the answer or you can open up This is one minus sine x upon cos, and now you can rationalize. You can, could have rationalized directly, or now one plus sine x upon one plus sine x. I have chosen the long cut way. I don't know why. Felt like this would more connect. A minus b, a plus b is a square minus b square. And what is one minus sine square x? cos square x isn't it 1 minus sin square x is cos square x one of the cos from numerator and from the denominator is gone the term which was causing problem is now gone the denominator cos x was troubling us it was giving us zero so it is gone we are left with cos upon 1 plus sin x put x as 90 cos 90 0 upon 1 plus 0 upon 2 answer is 0 answer is 0 if you would have directly rationalized you would have still got the answer 1 by uh, yeah 0 is the answer you would have got it some standard limits now quickly go through the formulas this is a formula write down the formula remember this x if it is done the variation it can be 1 plus f of x upon f of x when limit f of x is tending to 0 so all the formulas which i have given will be applicable if x is replaced with anything else and that thing is tending to 0 if x is replaced with something else it should also tend to 0 this formula will be applicable now in, this is ln natural log instead if you have lo, uh, some other log common log or any other base then you convert it into natural and solve it and then apply the formula evaluate this ln of 1 plus x square upon 1 minus cos x limit x tends to 0 see you can see this is tending to 0 we can apply the formula something is missing what is missing in the formula x x f of x f of x so x square niche denominator should also have x square x square is missing you are right let's divide the numerator and denominator with x square 
1 minus cos x can also be written as 2 sin square x by 2. And now life is all about adjustment. Numerator is sorted. Numerator is 1. Just go for the denominator nicely. And just split the limits. And rewrite it. 2 comes out. Limit x tends to 0. Sin x by 2 into sin x by 2. Whenever there is square, we split. Upon x, 2x, x square split. Now, adjust the missing terms. This is x by 2. So, we need divide by 2, multiply by 2. Divide by 2, multiply by 2. What is happening? This 2, 2 is 4. 2, 2 is 4 comes out. Numerator is anyways 1 upon this 2, 4 comes out, limit sine of x by 2 upon x by 2 into limit sine of x by 2 upon x by 2. Brackets are 0, 1 by 2, 1 upon 1 by 2 in turn will give us the answer as Brackets are 1. You can write the reasons and all. We generally do that in class 11. In class 12, it's understood. You know why. What is the reason why it's turning out to be 1. Next question. ln of 3 plus x square minus ln of 3 upon 1 minus cos x by 2. Log of a minus b will be log of a by b. I hope you all know this formula. Upon 1 minus cos x by 2 will be 2 sin square x by x half of x by 2 is x by 4. Go for the adjustments in life. Life is all about adjustment. Sima is all about adjustment. 1 plus x square by 3 upon 1 by 2 outside sin x by 4 into sin x by 4. What is missing boss? Missing is x square by 3 in x square is fine. x square is missing in the numerator. x square is also missing in the denominator. Done. We did numerator, denominator divided by x square. Next, in the numerator, here there is x square by 3. Denominator should also be x square by 3. So, divide by 3, multiply by 3. x by 4, x by 4, x by 4, x by 4. Just do the adjustments and now slowly separate it. 1 by 2 is there. Numerator check out very nicely. This 3 also comes out. So this becomes okay. 3 by 2. Limit ln of 1 plus x square by 3 upon x square by 3. Divided with right. This term, this term. This the two terms should be same in order to make a formula. This 4 and 4. 4 4 is 16. Limit x tends to 0. Sine of x by 4 upon x by 4. Into limit x tends to 0. Very good. You have got the answer. How many of you all got the answer? How many of you all got the answer? Hmm. This is this 1, 1, 3 by 2 upon 16, 3 by 2. Here it is 4, 4 is 16 but it is in the denominator. So 1 by 16 into limit x tends to 0 sin x by 4 upon x by 4 into limit x tends to 0 sin x by 4 upon x by 4. Very good. You all have got the answer. These two brackets 1. Numerator 1. Wow. Balle balle. 3 by 2 upon 1 by 16. 2 1s are and 2 8s are. Denominators. Denominator will be numerator. The answer to this question is 8 by 2. Three. The answer is option C, 8 by 3. Are you getting 
adjusted now all of you nice the next two formula is fifth and sixth limit x tends to 0 a raised to x minus 1 upon x is log a its other form can be a raised to f of x minus 1 upon f of x will be equal to log means I am talking about natural log f of x should be equal turning to 0 and the same formula can be replicated for e raised to x also just remember very easy ln a constant is it your constant is e so ln a will be 1 limit f of x tends to 0 e raised to f of x please make a formula book for this particular chapter limits of a function now a very simple question a raised to x minus b raised to x upon x will be what something is missing according to the formula 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 is missing let's add and subtract 1 there we used to divide multiply here we will uh, add and subtract can you see 1 added and subtracted all right now play with it play with your minus sign a raised to x minus 1 taking minus common b raised to x minus 1 separate the terms you have got the answer how many of you all already know the answer to this? How many of you all already know? This is ln a minus ln b can be merged together as ln of a by b. Absolutely right. Very good. Very good. Similarly, this question now once again. Try the adjustments. How can I bring the standard format? Try to look, look from a different specs. Try to look from a specs through which you can see bring that formula here. A raised to x, b raised to x is there. Okay. From the first two terms take a raised to x common. b raised to x minus 1 is left. From next two term minus common. b raised to x minus 1 is left. Aha. Bala bala. Bala bala. A raised to x minus 1 in one bracket, b raised to x minus 1 in another bracket. Separate the terms and you have got a nice formula. What's the answer? ln a into ln b. Very good. ln a into ln b. This is not dot by the way. Good. Can you try this question? e raised to sine square 3x minus 1 upon x square. Limit x is tending to 0. Try to match with the standard format. Limit x tends to 0. e raised to sine square 3x. Okay. Minus 1. So in order to bring it in the standard format, we need sine square 3x here, isn't it? If I want standard format, this has to be sine square 3x. So multiply and divide with sine square 3x. What is left again? x square. Very good. Limit x tends to 0. This forms a nice formula. e raised to sine square 3x minus 1 upon sine square 3x e raised to f of x minus 1 upon f of x into limit x tends to 0. Whenever there is square, you all know how to write it. Let it. x, x. Do the adjustments. Boss, 3 missing. 3, 3 multiplied. So, divided by 3, multi divided by 9, multiplied by 9. Alright, this is a formula, this is a formula. I mean, you know now, right? Skipping one step, this is 1, 1, 1 into 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And the answer is 9. The answer is simply 9. Understood? Getting it? Great. Next, last set of formulas. 7th and 8th. Limit x tends to 0. 1 plus x the whole raised to 1 by x will be e. 
Now if x is tending to 0, can you see this term is 0 and 1 by 0 this term is infinity. 0 and infinity, can you all see if x is tending to 0? Oh, okay, so the same format, if you have 1 plus f of x raised to g of x, where f of x tends to 0 and g of x tends to infinity. This term should be 0, the power is going to infinity. What is the answer? e raised to limit x tends to a f of x into g of x. e raised to limit x tends to a f of x into g of x. That means you will multiply these two terms and take the limit in the power of e. Write this down and based on it we have a question here. Limit x tends to 0, 1 plus ax the whole raised to 1 by x. Aha! Can you see ax is going to 0? When x is 0, ax is going to 0 and 1 upon x is going to infinity. If I have this term going to 0 and the power going to infinity, answer is simply e raised to limit x tends to 0, f of x into g of x. ax into 1 by x. x cancels. This is e raised to a. The answer will be e raised to a. Done. And the last part now, L'Hopital rule. L'Hopital. L'Hopital uncle is very nice uncle. But our CBSC uncle is not good uncle. They don't allow us to do use this. I don't know why. It's a shortcut way to solve the questions of limits. So many questions we did so far with the traditional method. 90% of those questions could have been solved using L'Hopital in just one step or two steps. Yes, all the questions we did so far, you can go back and solve it with L'Hopital method and it will be solved in one step. Then why did I teach the traditional method? Because CBSE uncle wants it, okay? So in CBSE you will do that traditional method. But you should also know this method. What says? Whenever you have 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity format, whenever on substituting the limits, you get 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, right? Suppose you are putting x as a. In the numerator and denominator, you are getting 0 by 0 or you are getting infinity by infinity. L'Hopital says you simply take the derivative of numerator, take the derivative of denominator and then put the limits. Hey? Really? Yes. What exactly we have to do? What exactly we have to do? I will write down the steps. First, you will substitute the limits and check if you have 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity. If you have this, you will differentiate the numerator. I hope everyone knows how to differentiate. Differentiate numerator. Let's say it is f dash of x. Then you will differentiate denominator g dash of x. Once you are done differentiating numerator and denominator, you will apply limits. Apply limits and get the answer. Now, assume that after applying limits, if you get again 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, you will once again differentiate numerator, once again differentiate denominator, that is double derivative and put limits. So, apply limits. If again you get 0 by 0, again you get 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, follow steps. 1, 2, 3 again. You will follow these 3 steps again. Right? So apply limits, get the answer. Apply limits, get the answer. But suppose you are again getting 0, then steps will be repeated. Example, this question, let's solve it by L'Hopital. Not by factorization, not by rationalization, not by standard limits, not by trigonometric limits. Not by direct substitution, but by L'Hopital. Put one, put one in numerator, one in denominator, we are getting 0 by 0. So L'Hopital uncle says, take the derivative of numerator. x raised to 6 derivative, 6x six raised to 5. Minus 2, 5 are 10x raised to 4. Derivative of denominator, 7x raised to 6 plus 3x. And now once you take the derivative, you can apply the limit. Now you apply the limit. Such a nice uncle, right? One step differentiate, second, first step check, second step differentiate, third step apply the limit. Put 
put 1. 6 minus 10 minus 4. 7 plus 3, 10, which is minus 2 by 5. The answer, if you try out by other methods like factorization or anything else, you will get the answer minus 2 by 5. Ln x upon x extending to infinity. Don't go for limits to infinity. Substitute. What is log of infinity? Lo and infinity by infinity. It is infinity by infinity. Law pital. What is derivative of numerator? Log x derivative 1 by x. What is derivative of denominator? 1. Put the limit. x tending to infinity. 1 by infinity. The answer is 0. La pital. A la pital. Limit x tends to 0. e raised to x minus 1 a minus x upon x square. Put x as 0. 1 minus 1 mi minus 1 upon 0. Okay. Ah, sorry, 1 minus 1 minus 0. We are getting 0 by 0. Oh, lopital. Lopital. Derivative of e raised to x, e raised to x. Derivative of 1, 0. Derivative of minus x, minus 1. Derivative of x square, 2x. Put the limit. Oh, again we are getting 0 by 0. Again we are getting 0 by 0. There are two ways from here. One, you do the third step. First step. Substitute, get 0 by 0. Second step, differentiate. Third step, apply the limits. Anything raised to 0, 1 minus 1 upon 2 into 0. This is 0 by 0. Oh, ho! Oh. Again, we are getting 0 by 0. What to do? Repeat. L'Hopital says, once again, you differentiate numerator, denominator and get the answer. So, if I differentiate the numerator again, derivative of e raised to x, e raised to x. Derivative of 1, 0. Derivative of 2x, 2. X, 2. And now when I put the limit, what is the answer? e raised to 0, 1 upon 2. So this is double L'Hopital rule or you all know the formula 1 upon 2, limit x tends to 0, e raised to x minus 1 upon x. And this entire thing is 1, the answer will be 1 by 2. Ah. Are you able to understand both the methods? L'Hopital twice. Same thing, great. Last question probably, limit alpha tends to pi by 4 sin alpha minus cos alpha upon alpha minus pi by 4. Put alpha as pi by 4, you are getting 0 by 0, isn't it? First step. So second step, differentiate sin alpha, cos alpha. Differentiate cos alpha minus sin alpha. Minus of minus plus. Differentiate alpha 1, pi by 4, 0. Put the limit. Third step, apply the limits. Cos 5 by 4 plus sin 5 by 5 by 4. 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2. 2 by root 2, which is equal to root 2. Answer is option E. So that was all about this chapter, guys. We did the concept of LHL, RHL. We did the concept methods for evaluating four methods. Some standard limits, we saw a lot of standard limits. Li limit using expansion series, actually this is nothing but your, those formula, 1 plus x, the whole raised to 1 by x. These are all nothing but expansion series. I just didn't want to introduce a new term, so we can put it under trigonometric limits. I can just put it under trigonometric limits, because these are nothing but trigonometric expansion. And last one. Lopita. That was all guys. We'll see you in the next class which is continuity and differentiability chapter. Okay, what will we do continuity and differentiability? We will continue this limits in continuity. So better practice a good amount of questions and you will feel continuity very very easy. That's it from my side. Have fun. Take care. Keep smiling. Keep studying. Thank you. Bye-bye. Signing off.